Good evening. Concerns have been expressed about poor living conditions for refugees after a charred body was found following a fire in a subdivided dwelling in Yunlong. An explosion was heard before the blaze, and police are treating the case as arson. Images captured on a mobile phone show the fire engulfing a two-story tin-sheeted structure in Unka village on Kamsheng Road this morning. The fire, which broke out at 10.30 a.m., also spread to two abandoned double-decker buses nearby. After firefighters doused the flames, police found a charred body at the site. I heard two bangs coming from the flats, said the village chief. He added that the structure had been split up into subdivided units. According to neighbors, a Sri Lankan man had been living inside the room where the fire started for the past five to six years. About 40 refugees lived in the area around the gutted structure. This when fire start again me sleeping, again somebody calling, fire outside. Again we see, oh, too much fire, again scared, scared, again go out. Maybe Sri Lankan, Bengali, Bangladesh, Indonesia and Bangladesh, black people, so many people, Chinese, maybe four or five Chinese. Three units in the structure were destroyed by the blaze, which the fire services department is treating as arson. Six African asylum seekers have been arrested in Wan Chai on suspicion of drug trafficking. Police also seized 730,000 U.S. dollars in cash and drugs worth $500,000 from the home of one suspect. ATV's An Chang reports. Handcuffed and hooded, six African men aged between 27 and 44 were taken to a police station on suspicion of drug trafficking. They were arrested in Wan Chai's bar area just after midnight last night. Officers swooped on the suspects following a three-month investigation. Police stumbled on the alleged syndicate while investigating a double murder in Wan Chai in November. After the suspects were spotted on closed-circuit TV, police began probing their activities. Officers posing as customers seized $20,000 worth of cocaine, cannabis, hashish, ice and ecstasy from the suspects, some of which were found in an air conditioning vent in a back alley of Lockhart Road. Officers also raided one suspect's flat in Hingfat Building in Yao Ma Te. During the house search, police has seized a total of 730 thousand dollars of U.S., which are suspect to be the drug policy of this drug trafficking syndicate. Officers also found 50 grams of cocaine and 20 grams of ice worth about $500,000. Lee said the suspected syndicate supplied drugs mainly to expatriates. And Chang, ATV News. A 68-year-old cleaner has been given a suspended jail sentence for collecting cash which fell off a security vehicle in Wan Chai on Christmas Eve. Chung Ying Kit was also ordered to pay $6,000 to G4S, the security company which was carrying the money. The cleaner picked up $8,000 but returned $2,000 earlier. There was a mad scramble for money when $15 million in $500 notes fell out of the vehicle. Seven people have been arrested for pocketing part of the unexpected windfall. Prominent businessman Alan Zeman says it'll be a crime and a tragedy if pan-democratic lawmakers reject the government's universal suffrage proposal for the next chief executive election. ATV's Emily Seal reports. Members of the think tank set up by Hong Kong's first chief executive have met for the third time since it was launched in November. Tung Chi Hua himself evaded reporters' questions. The members of the group known as Our Hong Kong Foundation were ready to share their views on the SER's political turmoil. Prominent businessman Alan Zeman, pioneer of the Lan Kwai Fong Entertainment District and former head of Ocean Park, urged opposition lawmakers to abandon their decision to veto the government's political reform package. The pan-democrats are furious over what they regard as fake universal suffrage because under Beijing's formula, candidates critical of the central government will in effect be screened out from the 2017 chief executive election. If we miss the chance, it'll be really a crime for all the people, everyone, all of you standing here will have a chance to vote. And I think that's really, really key so that we can really 
get Hong Kong unstuck. At the moment, Hong Kong is stuck and uh, we're not moving forward. Uh, we, we're moving backwards. And for the future generation, it's be a tragedy if we don't, if we miss this chance. The think tank's deputy chief, Simon Lee, said the group's 80 consultants, representing various sectors, will meet regularly to come up with a list of concrete suggestions before the government tables its final reform package in LegCo this summer. The Civil Human Rights Front has been told that it has to provide 100 marshals for its pro-democracy rally on Sunday. The group, which has found only 60 marshals, had sought to overturn a police decision. But an appeal board said it has to abide by the conditions demanded by police to help maintain order. On another point, the board said instead of fully assisting police in carrying out their duties, the organizers only have to help urge the crowd to cooperate with officers. Health officials say they are prepared to deal with any surge in flu cases. There have been 134 cases of severe flu so far this year, and 74 of the patients have died. ATV's Arthur Akiola reports. Flu cases are expected to surge over the Lunar New Year, but the government says hospitals will be able to handle a sharp increase in the number of patients. Speaking on a radio show this morning, Health Undersecretary Sophia Chan so the hospital authority has a contingency plan. It will delay non-urgent procedures and minor surgeries so that more beds and manpower are available. But Chan urged people, especially those in the vulnerable category, to get flu vaccinations. So far this year, more than half of the 318 people who contracted some form of flu were primary school or kindergarten students or those attending childcare centers. But Chan insists there isn't any need to suspend classes because the dominant strain of flu this year had affected the elderly more than the young. Arthur Urquiola, ATV News. Malaysia has declared the disappearance of flight MH370 an accident, adding that all 239 people on board are presumed dead. But China, which had more than 100 nationals on the ill-fated flight, urged Malaysia to continue efforts to find the plane, which went missing almost a year ago. ATV's Joyce Wu reports. What is possibly the world's biggest aviation mystery may never be solved. On the 8th of March last year, Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 disappeared while on a flight from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. Nothing has been found in an ongoing multinational search covering an area of 18,000 square kilometres in the southern Indian Ocean. This evening, Malaysia's top civil aviation official faced the nation. We officially declare Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 an accident and that all 239 of the passengers and crew on board MH370 are presumed to have lost their lives. Most of the passengers were Chinese, and Premier Li Keqiang urged Malaysia to compensate their relatives. Malaysia, he went on, should try all possible means to search for the plane and passengers. Also in Beijing, relatives of the victims disputed Malaysia's conclusion. Some demanded video evidence that their family members had been on MH370. Issue I have the... the Malaysian crew on board the ill-fated plane include flight supervisor Patrick Gomez. His wife was angry with the way the government made the announcement today. Shouldn't we know first before they go and tell the nation? The what's the point of giving us a briefing after telling the whole world? It doesn't work that way. Come on. Malaysia's announcement paves the way for the payment of compensation. But for those who lost their loved ones, that will be of little comfort. Joyce Wu, ATV News. Indonesian investigators say they now have a pretty clear picture of the last moments of the Air Asia plane which crashed into the sea late last month, killing all 162 people on board. 
Flight QZ8501 crashed 40 minutes after taking off from the Indonesian city of Surabaya for Singapore. The head investigator said today that the co-pilot was flying the plane shortly before the tragedy. The Airbus A320 had been cruising at a stable altitude before the crash, the investigator said, contradicting earlier claims that the aircraft had climbed abruptly before stalling and plunging into the sea. The probe is now focusing on possible computer glitches. In other world headlines, an inquest into last month's hostage siege in Australia has heard that one of the captives was killed by fragments of a police bullet. And Havana is demanding the return of some Cuban territory before resuming diplomatic ties with the U.S. Here's Arthur Acuola. Cuban President Raul Castro says the U.S. must hand back Guantanamo Bay before the two sides can restore ties that were cut more than 50 years ago. Washington uses Guantanamo Bay to house terrorist suspects. Castro also demanded the lifting of a trade embargo imposed by the U.S. in an unsuccessful attempt to force Cuba to abandon socialism. An inquest into last month's hostage drama at a cafe in Sydney has heard that one person was killed by a police bullet. The 17-hour siege ended when police fired several shots, killing the hostage taker. Two hostages were also killed. The coroner said one of them, 38-year-old Katrina Dawson, was hit by fragments from a police bullet which ricocheted. One fragment struck a major blood vessel. She lost consciousness quickly and died shortly afterwards. The other hostage, the cafe's manager, was shot in the head at close range by the gunman, witnesses said. A worker in Taiwan was killed and two others were injured after scaffolding collapsed on the set of a film directed by Hollywood legend Martin Scorsese. The three were dismantling a Japanese-style building in Taipei when the accident occurred this morning. Filming for the historical drama Silence has been halted following the tragedy. Arthur Ricciola, ATV News. In sports, Andy Murray has reached the final of the Australian Open in Melbourne. But there was a scare for the Briton when he lost the first set to Thomas Burditch. The Czech, however, was beaten 6-love in the...